morning good morning welcome this is prevailing word ministries international a family for you to belong trust that you are doing well and you are ready ready for the word i want to welcome everybody that has just joined us live stream i want to welcome every family every young man young woman every boy every girl every person that is seated next to their mom their dad every person who's ready for the word I want you to declare with me and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Well, we are going to rejoice. We are glad and we're getting into the word. And today, God has a special word for us about increase. That's right. Somebody say increase. Somebody shout increase. Somebody dance to increase. Somebody celebrate to increase. Increase is coming your way. And there is nothing that the devil can do about it. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them right now. Tell them increase is coming your way. And there is nothing that the devil can do about it. With an attitude now. One more time. Turn to the other neighbor and tell them increase. Is coming your way, and there is nothing that the devil can do about it. Hallelujah! Somebody give God a shout of praise and stamp your feet and declare the devil is under my feet. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we're going to get into the word, and it's exciting. And I just want to encourage you and let you know that you know the word of God is seed, the word of God is seed. Jesus, you know, begins to speak about the kingdom of God and he explains the kingdom of God with the parable of the sower. And it says the sower sows seed. Seed is the word. Get ready right now to receive the seed of the word. And he begins to talk about the four different types of soil. Now that is our heart. Now remember, faith is of the heart. And it's when we believe within our heart. So you need to make sure that the soil of your heart, it is not stony soil, you know, the stony ground. It is not a pavement where, you know, literally the word just cannot even sprout. It's the word just goes onto the ground and cannot do anything. Why? Because your heart has closed itself to what God wants you to do. Maybe it's stony, you know, the, the, the cares of life, the COVID, the unemployment, you know, the retrenchment, whatever it is, the situation that you're facing, it's like thorns that are coming and they want to disrupt the seed, to avoid it from growing. But declare that your heart is that soil that is fertile. And how do you know that it's fertile? Because your heart is fertile by faith. Your heart is fertile by faith. Not how you feel, not how, you know, um, it looks like, but because by faith your heart is fertile. And so get ready to receive the seed that will bring increase. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I'm expectant. And as we get into a time of praise and worship, I'll read Psalm 147 verse 1 for you. It says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. How beautiful it is when we sing our praises to the beautiful God. For he makes, for he, for praises makes us lovely before him and brings him great delight. Praise makes us lovely before him. Praise makes our, our soil become fertile. Praise makes our soil, our heart become rich and moist and ready for that seed of the word of God. Right now, I want you to open your heart as we get into praise, as we sing hallelujah to God and praises to God. Open your heart right now that your heart is open and ready to receive the word. Father, thank you. We thank you for the word that is going forth. Thank you for the word that is broadcast. Father, to every man and woman who is listening, who is watching, oh God. Father, thank you that you will touch their hearts right now. Father, thank you that every heart I declare is, a, is, a, is fruitful ground fruitful ground to receive your word. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we declare that you are Lord and you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Well, if you're ready for praise and worship, click like, click share, and get into praise and worship with many people out there in Jesus' name.
Praise God. Good morning, family. How are you? What a joy it is to see you and to have a great time in the world together. Haven't you been so blessed by the worship, by the prayer, and what God has been doing? I believe we are in a very, very significant season, and I'm glad you're able to join us today in this wonderful time in the Word. Are you ready for the Word? If you are, click Amen, say praise God, say thank you, Jesus. Get ready, get your Bible, get your notebook, and we are going to get into the Word of God right now. Praise God. In fact, let's pray. Let's get ready to, to hear the Word, share the Word, and enjoy the Word. So open up your Bible, get your notes ready, and then we pray together and get into the Word. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your Word that is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you that your Word is able, Father, to save us, deliver us, change and transform our lives. Thank you that your word is living and powerful. Your word is real and true. Your word changes, transforms us, equips us for success. We bless you this morning for your word. Thank you that it will equip us, empower us, refresh us, encourage us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we began a brand new series last week, and we continue with this powerful, powerful teaching that I believe is really going to equip you uh, for personal financial success and personal increase and business increase, and that we can be a blessing to our nations and bring increase to the nations. So what is the foundation of what we have been teaching? We went through quite a series, quite a number of uh, principles. We went through quite a number of foundational principles, and today I'm going to continue to lay foundations so that you can have a very, very clear understanding of how increase works, how increase works. So we made this statement, the protocol of the kingdom of God is increase. The protocol of the kingdom of God is increase. In other words, everything in the kingdom is supposed to increase. It's supposed to experience increase. It's supposed to be multiplying on a consistent basis. We will see in Genesis chapter 1 when we go there that the word multiply, the word increase, the word blessing implied or in fact not even implied was directly speaking into this concept of us experiencing increase in every area of our lives. So we then said the, the subtitle to the subject increase is this very simple phrase, Get increase on your mind. Get increase on your mind. Now, that may be quite a contradictory statement because many of us have been taught or told that you must not have increase on your mind. You must not have, don't be money-minded. Don't think money. Stop thinking prosperity. You must not think all of that. We have been trained by the devil to not think increase. We have been trained and cultured into poverty. All the statements that our parents made as we grew up and they told us, money doesn't grow on trees. Do you think I, I just bleed money? Do you think money just comes out of the wall? And all of those statements became a permanent part of our brain or our thinking so much that we don't even think increase. We don't want to think prosperity. And so many people attack messages like this because they even go as far as saying, he's a prosperity preacher. Prosperity means abundance, it means increase, it means fruitful, it means multiplying, it means well, well-being, it means fruitfulness, it means uh, protection, preservation. Now, aren't those words synonymous with the gospel? So I don't know what is wrong with the phrase prosperity preacher because that's what we're supposed to be. All of us are supposed to be prosperity preachers. We're supposed to speak prosperity, preach prosperity, proclaim prosperity in order to begin to experience prosperity. So my question to you today is, do you have increase on your mind? Or do you have scarcity on your mind? The, the economic uh, environment and political environment that we are living in has put many people under pressure to set their minds on poverty or to set their mind on limitation, to set their minds on struggling, to set their minds on scarcity. 
it, it's going to take work to consistently keep your mind in the word or renew your mind if you're in that space. Renew your mind until your mind gets to a place of increase, prosperity, abundance, overflow, because it's a mindset that you acquire by getting into the word of God. And that's what we're endeavoring to do, to move you to that place where you have a clear understanding of what God has said. We then established why God wants you to prosper. We gave you three very important principles to honor God with your seed, to live a comfortable life and to enjoy it, and to be a blessing to others. Then I gave you a really long list of scriptures that helped you to understand that God wants you to set increase on your mind and experience increase in every area of your life. Then we went through a whole bunch of scriptures. I just love, don't you just love the word of God? There's nothing that we ever teach that we cannot prove from scripture. The scripture, holy scripture, is the foundation of everything that we teach. So that you, your faith, the Bible says that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So we teach the word because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word is the foundation for our faith. Acts 19.20 says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Set your mind on the word and the word will prevail in your life and in your circumstances. In Proverbs, we established the seven areas that are vital for you to, uh, to begin to work on in order to see increase. And we're building on the word diligence, being diligent in eight areas. We said the heart, the hand, your business, your flocks or herds, which we equated to your investments, your thoughts, your soul, and your substance. You must be diligent in these seven areas. We concluded our teaching by giving a simple assignment, and the assignment was go through these seven areas of diligence in your life and assess yourself on a scale of 1 is to 10 to see which of these areas in your life you're doing well at or you're doing poorly at. So you're supposed to have done this homework during the week. I hope you did your homework. If you didn't do your homework, I'm praying for you. Do your homework right now. These seven areas that I mentioned, how well are you doing at them? And then, once you've done that, you know what you need to work on. You know the areas, whether it's your mind or your spirit or your investments or your substance or your flock or your, uh, your, your, your work that you're doing with your hands. You now know that I need to increase my working here because I scored two or three or four. I scored so poorly, I'm not doing well in the area of my mind, developing my mind and thinking clearly. So now that we've given you a, a brief rundown of where we have come from over the past week, let's now get into what we are teaching today. So we're going into today's lesson. And I want to begin by reading a passage of scripture in the book of Isaiah. We read this last week, but it's a, it's a very convenient place for us to start in the book of Isaiah. And we're reading verse uh, chapter 48, chapter 48 of Isaiah and reading verse 15 to 17. 15 to 17. There we go. It says, I, even I, have spoken to you and have called you and brought you and, and have brought him. In this way uh, will he prosper. Let me read in this translation. It says, I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have brought him and he shall make his way prosperous. I have brought him and he shall, I have called him and I have brought him and he shall make his way prosperous. He shall make his way prosperous. You shall make your way prosperous. Now, whether or not you prosper is not in the, in the realm of God. It is in your jurisdiction. Now, I know that sounds strange because prosperity ultimately does come from God, and you'll see that as we teach. But whether or not you prosper is not a function of God, but it is a function of you. So if you are not prospering, 
it is not God's fault that he's not prospering you because he has already prospered you. He's already made prosperity available. He's already made increase available for you. But if your mind is not set on increase, God cannot bring increase in your life. So he says, I have called him and I have brought him and he shall make his way prosperous. Then he says, come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. So come near and listen. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, uh, from the time that it was. There I am. And now the Lord and his spirit have sent me. Thus saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord which teacheth you to profit which leadeth you in the way that you should go. Now, very, very amazing and loaded passage of Scripture. And, and I'm just going to glean a couple of things that I want you to understand regarding the area of increase. So it says, that saith the Lord, your Redeemer. That word Redeemer means I brought you out, I brought you back, I own you, I have legal right over you. I am your guardian, I am your steward, I am your master, your Lord. So he says, I have redeemed you, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Holy One of Israel. I am the God which teaches you to profit. I teach you to profit. I teach you to increase. And in order for you to experience this increase, I lead you in the way that you must go. So if you're not experiencing increase, it could be because you're going the wrong way. You're not going in the way that he's leading you. He says, uh, the Lord leads me in green pastures. That's Psalm 23. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So if you're not experiencing still waters and green pastures, increase in prosperity, you are possibly going the route that you shouldn't be going. There's some decisions, some steps, some things that you need to change in your life because God is endeavoring to teach you to profit. The path that is leading you into or onto is a path that has profit. Profit is taken from the word increase, the word yao, which I gave you last week, which means to ascend. It means to be valuable. It means to set forward. It means to be profitable. That means when you look at your financial statements, your balance sheet, you should see it ascending. You should see it increasing. You should see it moving forward. You should see it being profitable. You start off with 10 cows. You should have 20 cows, then 80 cows. You start off with one client. You should get to 100 clients. That's increase. That is profitable. That is moving forward. So everything in your life, if you're walking with God, must be experiencing some element of profitability in every area of your life. So let's explore this a little bit further. I want to read another lengthy passage of Scripture. And this is in the, uh, in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to read from verse 6 to verse 12. Don't you love the word? Tell yourself, I love the word of God and I'm ready for the word. I'm ready to listen to the word. I'm ready to take in the word. I'm ready to enjoy the word. Father, bless the reading of your word today. This is Paul writing and he says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, these are beautiful words. Now, when I do my Bible study, I, I like to pause. That's why I can study one passage of Scripture maybe for two, three, four days. Some of the Scriptures I'm sharing with you today, I've been studying them for the last month and a half. Just three, four, five Scriptures that I've been studying for over a month. Why? Because you begin to see. You go into a word, you break it down, and I'm going to do that with you today just a little bit to help you understand the foundations of what we're teaching. But look at the words that he's using sparingly, bountifully, soweth, reap, 
beautiful words, powerful words that we're going to be studying over the next uh, month in this series. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give. Not grudgingly. Your heart must be right when it comes to the sowing of your seed, the giving of your seed. Nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God is able, now notice, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. God is able to make all grace, all graces abound toward you. That you always, having all sufficiency, my goodness, glory to God, thank you Jesus. Now please underline some of these beautiful phrases. That you always, not just once in a while, but always having all sufficiency. All sufficiency. This is the mindset that God wants us to have. This is the frame of mind. Have increase on your mind. God wants you to replace that scarcity mindset that says, I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to sow. I don't have anything to be a blessing to others. I don't have enough for myself. That's the scarcity mindset that God is saying, I want you to get rid of. So he says, you always, always having all things, sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Now notice, he's using interesting words. I mean, this is amazing. Um, having always, always is a big word. Having all is a big word. Sufficiency is a beautiful word. In all things, it's a big word. May abound unto every, every Every is a big word. Every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, given. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. That's another long word. Now he that ministereth or distributes or gives seed to the sower, that's you. If you're a sower, he's going to give you seed. Both minister or give bread for your food. He will give you seed and he will give you bread. And not only that, he will multiply. He will multiply. He will what? Multiply. Now we're talking increase. He will multiply. Now the first part of the verse that we read becomes a reality when this part of the verse begins to kick in. So there is a compounding effect that begins to kick in in the, I call this God's fiscal policy, God's financial policy, the policy of the revenues of the kingdom of God. It has a compounding effect. Now, we know compounding interest from the negative perspective that if a thousand rand at the beginning of the year begins to gain interest with a compounding factor on it, you will owe a lot of money by the end of the year. Why? The compounding factor kicks in. Similarly, compounding interest working for you is, is beneficial because when you invest money and it begins to gain interest on a compounding factor, it's not just gaining interest on the, 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 the original amount. It gains interest on the original amount plus the amount that was added as the profit. And so that's the total amount that begins to gain interest. Similarly, in compounding debt, the amount that you owed, that 1,000 rand, plus the interest, let's say, that comes in, which is, let's say, 150 rand. So now your debt, your interest is calculated on 1,150. So when you enter into God's multiplication factor, I'm going to show you from the word of God, he begins to multiply with a compounding effect. That's how you're going to get into the space where you have sufficiency in all things and abounding in every good work and you begin to disperse abroad and your righteousness endures forever. So he says, 
He will multiply what? What's he going to multiply? He will multiply your seed sown. 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 Don't let the devil scare you and intimidate you regarding sowing seed. Don't let the devil fill you with all the corrupt teachings and stuff that is bringing fear and telling you, no, it doesn't work, da 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 That is all the devil trying to intimidate you and move you out of the space that God has brought you into of revelation. You must understand the, the fiscal policies of the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. So, it says here, and multiply your seed sown and increase there we go there's that beautiful word increase the fruits of your righteousness he will increase the fruits of your righteousness being enriched in everything to all bountifulness being enriched that means becoming richer god wants you to be rich god wants you to get richer being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the need or the wants of the saints, but is abandoned also by many thanksgiving to God. Oh, that's... <laughs> My goodness, I am so excited all by myself. Yeah, let me just take time to give thanks to the Lord. Father, I love your word. Your word is rich. Your word is beautiful. Your word is amazing. Praise God for the word. So what was Paul saying here? I want to zero in on a number of words, play around with them for the next few minutes. The first word is the word multiply, which is taken from the Greek word plethuno. Plethuno, P-L-E-T-H-U-N-O, pleth and uno, plethuno. Right, what does the word plethuno mean? The word plethuno is taken from another root word, and it means to increase. It, it means to increase, it means to abound, it means to multiply. So when you read that verse again and you begin to replace the English words in your translated Bible of whatever version you're using with the original words, you will notice that he's actually playing around with words that are synonyms. Words that, I mean, you saw the word abound appear a number of times, uh, abound abundantly. Those words come from the same root words, which we, where we also get the same word, uh, plethuno, which means to increase, to abound, or to multiply. So he's using words that are very rich. Unfortunately, the English language is a very poor language. It is poor in that it does not have certain words as, that are expressive enough to help you understand the original thought. That's why when you look in your concordance or when we talk about breaking down some of the English words, like the word plethuno in, 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 a, in a Greek mind, uh, remember the, the, the original New Testaments that we are using are translated from the Septuagint uh, translation, which was Greek, okay? And so when a Greek mind says plethuno, they know, this is where you get words like plenty, abundance, overflow, and so on. Plethuno, they know we're talking increase, abounding, and multiplication. But in your mind, when you say multiply, you're thinking two times two is four. Two times four is eight, etc., etc., etc. But you're not thinking in the same way that a, a, a normal Hebrew mind and Greek mind was thinking. So that causes what I call lost in translation. A lot of truth is lost when we translate it from the original to our English language. Similarly, you know, I always use this example. You can tell a joke in Zulu or Tosa or Shona or Ndebele or Afrikaans. And that joke will make every person who's an Afrikaner speaking person 
to really laugh and you know they're all getting in there and laughing and you know tears coming out etc and then you say guys what are you laughing at then they translate the joke from Afrikaans to English because you don't know the idioms you don't know the original thoughts and experiences of the Africana context of the joke the joke won't be as funny to you but to everybody else they are tickled they are really laughing and going all over the place with it but why because certain truth gets lost in translation so to get the original import of truth you've got to go back to the original because when you read your bible and your mind will naturally translate and use what we call current parlance current parlance uh, how a word applies or is used today you know when well, long ago when you said you know I'm, i feel so gay it meant you are happy but when you use the word gay today it means something totally different when in olden days when you say i'm hot it meant i need a fan i need to cool down when you say i'm hot today current parlance it means something else so it's similar to the bible current parlance causes us to lose the original weight of a word and we begin to we begin to treat it lightly so that's why i keep taking you back to the original word so that you understand what god was saying to you this word plethuno is taken from the greek word plethos plethos <laughs> pronounced play thos plethos or plethos means a fullness of that a fullness of that a fullness of something a large number of a thronging of a populace of a bundle company or multitude Woo! glory to god so when god talks about the going let's go back to our verse the the part that we're reading here and he says now he that ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and plethuno and plethos your seed sown so now let's replace the word multiply and put the words that we have learned now the one who ministers seed to the sower and bread to the eater what is he going to do to your seed so he is going to increase your seed he is going to make your seed abound and multiply it he is going to make your seed a company a multitude a throng a populace a large number a fullness of Woo! now that's exciting now that that's this is a bible study this is beginning to understand what god is saying to us so now we are beginning to go into the depth of the scripture we are responsible for planting and watering but god is in god is the one who is responsible for the multiplying which is the word let me read the scripture here let's go over quickly this is now corinthians 1st corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 to 8 Paul writes and he says I have planted so I do the planting Apollos watered we do the watering so the planting and the watering is not a god factor it is an us factor do you notice that I have planted so what I'm doing right now is I'm planting the seed of the word in you and I may also be watering or enhancing the seed on the inside of you but then it goes on to say but god gave here's the word god gave the increase god is the one that causes the word to bring forth abundantly to multiply to plethos to to begin to increase so then neither is he that planted anything and neither is he that watereth but god that giveth the increase now he that planted and he that watereth are one and every man shall receive 
Oh, here's another word. Here's another word. Glory to God. I'm giving you lots of words today. So please take notes. Please take notes. So he says, uh, the, the one who plants and the one who waters are one. But every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Now, when we use the word labor, again, current parlance talks about minimum labor force and minimum wages for labor. So when we think labor, we are thinking work. We are thinking digging the trenches and, and installing cables and uh, digging sewer pipes and so on. That's what we think when we're talking labor. But labor here is talking about that which you do as in as in your life work, but it also means that which you're doing as in the activating of the word. Because remember the context, I planted the word, Apollos watered with the word, God gave the increase of the word. Similar to when Jesus comes and says, the kingdom of God is as a man who went out to sow seed, or a sower who went out to sow seed. Some seed fell on good ground, thorny ground, stony ground, hard ground, and the seed that fell on good ground, what happened to it? It increased, it multiplied, and brought forth some 60, some 80, some 100 fold. So in that case, God was bringing the increase because the seed was on good ground, and that was the reward for the labor of sowing. That was the reward of the labor of the one who planted the seed. So that's what he's saying in our earlier scripture that we read in Corinthians, and that's what he's connecting to here when he says you shall receive your reward according to your own labor. So when the seed has been planted, God begins to bring the increase of the seed that has been planted, depending on where it has been planted, how it has been watered, how it has been nurtured, how you have made sure the conditions are conducive so that the seed will produce a hundredfold. The conditions are stated in the passage that I quoted just now, good ground, thorny ground, stony ground, and the, 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 the pathway. So the seed that fell on the other conditions, which was the thorny, stony, and the pathway, the, they didn't produce anything. But the seed that fell on the good ground, that one produced something. Why? Because the conditions were right. So every man shall receive according to is labor. Now, if the word of God is true, which it is, you are receiving right now according to your labor. So, how do I experience increase? I adjust my labor. I increase my labor. I increase my work. Now, we'll get to that part. Let's break down another interesting word that we're introduced here, which is the word mistos. The word mistos, M-I-S-T-H-O-S, mistos. Now, you, you may be saying, why are you giving us so many words uh, that are Greek and isn't this so confusing? Well, you didn't get confused when you're studying Thanos and whatever. What's his name in, in the Marvel movie, the guy Thanos or whatever I think he's called Thanos? You, you, you know about Thanos, you know about all those weird characters. Now, I'm introducing you to stuff that will change your life. So you can break it down. You can study this. In fact, if you were to actually study some of those names that you're studying, like Thor and his sister's name and all the other names that you're introduced in some of those movies, you would be amazed to discover that you've actually become an expert in Satanism. But you, 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 don't, you, you don't know what you're being introduced to because all those are words that are in Greek mythology and Satanism and the study of all kinds of gods and actual witchcraft processes. Now, when we teach you the word like this, then it's too much. Now it's too much of the word, too many words. No, it's not too many words. You need to master these words. You can master these words. Don't listen to the voice of the devil that's telling you this is too much. That's the devil's voice. Shut him out. So the word mistos is the word reward. Let's break that down a little bit. Increase is encoded in everything that we, um, that we have in this life. God encoded increase into everything. He encoded increase into anything that carries life in it, 
must increase. That's why uh, air, air, oxygen, etc., all these things have an element of increasing. We can make more oxygen. We can make more air. We can make more water. We can make more of this. We can make more babies. We can make more chickens. We can make more fish. We can make more grass. We can make more trees. Why? Because God encoded increase right at the beginning when he spoke the blessing and he said, be fruitful and multiply. And we established uh, last week that increase comes from seed. And to be fruitful, you must be seedful. Okay? But we'll build on that. Let's build on this word reward. The reward for obeying biblical principles and following godly principles principles or precedent is increased. Write it down. Write it down right now. I don't know where you're watching from or where you're connecting to us from and I hope you're enjoying yourself. Please give us feedback. Let us know what's blessing you and what's ministering to you and what we can help you with. But let me read that statement again. Write it down in your notes. The reward and underline that word reward for obeying biblical principles and following godly precedent is increase. We've already studied the word increase and we'll continue just now. But now we're studying the word reward. The reward of obeying biblical principles and following godly precedent is increase. Look at the, let's look at the connection by understanding the selection of words used. God is always deliberate about the words that he uses. He doesn't use any word that is redundant or that is without use. That's why he says the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God to come, there must be a fulfillment of the word and every dot, every yod, every little, the smallest letter in the Hebrew language will be fulfilled. So you cannot remove anything in the Bible without corrupting the essence of what God is endeavoring to say, which is why there's a bit of a challenge when we translate the Bible, because sometimes you don't have words that express original truths. But let's look at, look at the deliberateness of the selection of words here. The word reward is a very intriguing word. It is, like I said, translated from the word mistos or mistos. For, for those that want the pronunciation. Whew, this is exciting. It means to pay for a service, literally or figuratively, good or bad, the higher reward or wages. Remember, we're building from our passage of Scripture here in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 8, and the last part of the verse says, Every man shall receive his own mistos reward according to his labor. According to his labor. So the word mistos means to pay for service, to pay for labor. So everything that is done will receive payment. There is a law that works right, a principle that works in this world. It's the law of compensation. The law of compensation. Everything will be compensated for. You know, when you are working in a company and you break your hand on the company, you go for compensation. They'll, they'll calculate the value of your arm that was broken or cut off and say over the next 50 years or 20 years of your productivity, you would have earned this amount. So we're going to compensate you for your arm that has been cut off in the company, etc. Now, they are paying you for what you would have done. Now, in this case, we're talking about paying you for what you have done. Okay? So, when we talk, God will reward every man. He will pay for every service. Now, the law of compensation does not work just because we're reading the Bible. The law of compensation works because it's a principle that God established in the world. Now, this is where many believers get confused because giving is a principle. So whether the giving is a Hindu giving, a Muslim giving, a Baha'i giving, or a, a whatever giving, the principle is if you give, it shall be given back to you. 
the principle of compensation says if you hurt somebody and you mistreat somebody you will be paid back so remember what you did to the taxi driver what you said to the taxi driver remember what you did to that till operator when you were buying those products at that supermarket remember what you did to the security guard as you were driving into that complex guess what you will be paid back you will get mistos you will get a payment for the service Remember the people you smiled at. Remember the people that you gave an act of kindness to. Remember that person that you bought an outfit for. Remember the person you bought a, a birthday present for. Remember the person that you gave a hug and encouraged when they were feeling low and discouraged. Guess what? Compensation has kicked in. You will be paid back a hundredfold or multiplied of whatever you have given. So every act of kindness will be paid back. And every act of wickedness, the Bible is filled, I mean, replete with scriptures, if you read Proverbs, for payment and uh, rewards that will go to the wicked, for their wickedness. Those that will pay, uh, rob the poor to, to honor the rich, and those that will be corrupt, and those that will... God is very clear on the law of compensation. Glory to God. This is really good teaching right here. So pay for service, that's the word mistos, good or bad, reward, payment or reward for hire. That means wages. Okay, so let's connect this with Paul's words in the book of Hebrews. Let's study a very interesting phrase that we find in the book of Hebrews, which is recompense of reward. Recompense of reward. Now we know mistos, we know reward, payment, reward. That which you get for your, as wages, for what you have done. Now, the wage master is not the person you did the act of kindness for. I think I need to throw this in. Because a lot of times, you give somebody something and you expect them to be your reward. The wage master for every act of kindness is God. The wage master for every act of wickedness is the devil. So the devil is waiting to reward you and to bring increase and to bring multiplication. He cannot if there is no premise for reward. So if you have not sown any seed of wickedness, Satan cannot multiply and reward you and bring evil in your life because that's a violation of the law of compensation. But... If you begin to do stuff and you're consistently doing it and you're not bringing yourself to repentance, Satan's going to take you to court. And when he goes to court, he has legal right to bring an accusation against you. And God, God will say, okay, this person has been violating kingdom principles. There's nothing I can do anymore to protect him. I know grace comes in. Grace protects you. He will plead for your case for as long as he can. But after a while, you're consistently doing that which is wrong. God says, you're going to have to pay the, the, the consequences for this. And I know the, the, the grace camp may have issues with that statement. But if this was not true, there wouldn't be people that are suffering. There wouldn't be people that are HIV positive. There wouldn't be people that are getting pregnant out of wedlock. Because grace would stop the sperm of a, a person that is not your husband to say, oh, grace says you can't get pregnant because we want to protect you. God will protect you as much as you can, but if you continue in foolishness, payday is coming. But we don't want to use that in the negative. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He will get a reward. Anyway, let's move on. Recompense of reward is what we are now uh, studying in the book of Hebrews. We'll go to the scriptures just now, but let's study the word first or the phrase, recompense of reward. It is taken from a, he a Greek word, Mr. Podosia. Mr. Podosia, which is um, a combination of mistos, the word we've just studied, reward, uh, wages, payment, compensation, with the word Podosia, and we're going to study that just now. Mr. Podosia is a word which means recompense of reward or the reward for an act done. 
The phrase is loaded and is rich with meaning as it is an integral part. Listen to this. It is an integral part of God's fiscal policies, God's financial policies. Now, I hope you understand phrases like fiscal and so on. If you don't, please Google them. Uh, I, I want to stay with these words that I'm teaching here. These benefits, these benefits in uh, every, every um, kingdom, every nation has got fiscal policies that it uses. Okay, In the same way that governments or municipalities offer benefits, rewards, rebates for actions that benefit them. The, the rewards or rebates are a relief that is offered just as a way to, re, just as the word recompense of reward. In other words, the government of South Africa will say, we would like uh, more businesses that will create jobs. So if your business can create jobs for a hundred people, we will give you a tax rebate. We will tax you less because you are a benefit to society. If your business will employ 10,000 people, we will give you even bigger tax cuts or rebates. Why? We want you to benefit by the benevolence that you are extending to the citizens of the nation. You understand that? So in the Policies, the cities, municipalities do the same. If you do anything that enhances the value of the municipality within which you're operating, they will give you certain rebates or certain benefits. Okay? Now, this is big. You've got to understand this. Now, the kingdom of God operates on similar principles. In fact, the policies that are used by governments and nations were extracted from the original, which is what God established. So how do we make this work for us? These benefits incentivize the citizens of the kingdom to be responsible in active involvement in the building the economy of their kingdom. Let me read that again. These benefits that are given... The benefits incentivize the citizens of the kingdom to be responsible in active involvement of building the economy of their kingdom. So the government incentivizes by giving rewards, rebates, tax cuts, and all kinds of wonderful benefits so that they encourage the citizens to be responsible, responsive to the act of building a commonwealth for that country. So we as citizens of the kingdom of God have been given certain rewards, recompense of reward in order to incentivize and motivate us to be actively involved in the, re in the benefiting that particular kingdom, in this case, which is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, this is so exciting. I hope you're taking notes. You better listen to this several times so that it sinks in. It's taken me years studying this to really build it up and begin to understand how it works. So what we have just read here, these benefits incentivize the citizens of the kingdom to be responsive, responsible in active involvement in benefiting the economy of their kingdom. What we have just read here is what the Bible calls righteousness. It's what the Bible calls righteousness. Now, when Abraham becomes, the Bible says, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. What had happened? He had seen the benefits that God was showing him, and he had made an active positioning of himself to become an active member of the fiscal policies and systems of the kingdom of heaven. So God says, you will benefit by acting in line and giving of yourself to us so that we can change the world. Our goal is to change the world. Our goal is to evangelize the world. Our goal is to establish people that love God and that have faith in the kingdom of God. Our, our goal is to bring people into our kingdom. 
And if you, Abraham, are willing to give of yourself because through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, you now assume a new position which is called righteousness. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because you have chosen to position yourself and be involved in the economy of the kingdom. Glory to God forevermore. This is so exciting and time is running out. Time just gets jealous, doesn't it? So I'm going to close by reading you these scriptures that help you to understand the recompense of reward. The reward system that God uses to establish his principles. In fact, before I do that, let me quickly show you this. this since I was talking about Abraham, the word reward in the life of Avram. This is Genesis chapter 15. Quickly go to Genesis chapter 15. I've got a few minutes, so you better open your Bible quickly there. Please open your Bible quickly before we close. Genesis chapter 15. This is God speaking. He says, after these events, Hashem came to Avram in a vision saying, Fear not, Avram, for I am your shield and your reward is very great. Because of the position you have taken. Now remember, this is on the, on the backdrop of what God had begun to speak to him and how God was dealing with him in Genesis chapter 14 where he fights with the many kings and then he comes back and then he gives his tithe to Melchizedek and he honors Melchizedek, Melchizedek king of righteousness king of righteousness. So now righteousness is conferred on him because he followed the fiscal policies of the kingdom of God. And on the backdrop of that, God then comes to him in Genesis chapter 15 and he says to him, after these words, Hashem came to Avram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, for I am your shield and your reward is very great. I am your shield, your protection. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you. And your reward is very great. The King James says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. So now we are connecting what God is saying to Abram to what he is saying in the book of Hebrews with this very unique word, Mr. Podosia. Now, quickly, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. He says there, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to these things. Listen to that. Listen to the tone of the verse. There is a tone when somebody speaks, when somebody writes. God is writing this through Paul, and he has a tone. Therefore, we don't have time to look at the st statements before, because whenever you see a therefore in the Bible, you must always pause and find out what it is there for. You got that? When you see a therefore in the Bible, you must stop and find out what it is there for. But we, we are just picking up on the therefore here. Therefore, because of everything I've just said, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Remember what Isaiah said? He says, I even I am the Lord that teacheth you to profit. He says, I'm speaking words to you. I'm giving you guidance. So he's connecting again. Words being spoken, teachings going forth. So we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them slip. For the word spoken by angels, if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, a Mr. Podosia. If word spoken by angels had a Mr. Podosia, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first, which at the first, began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. In other words, be serious about what you're hearing. 
Be serious about what Jesus said. Be serious about what those that heard him said. So the New Testament gives us the foundation for what we need to give heed to, which is built on what had already been established in what we call the Old Testament. Now jump over to chapter 10, verse 35, 37. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. There's another therefore. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great Mr. Podosia, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you have done the word of God, you have done the promises of God, you will receive the promise. After you have labored in the word, after you have done what God has said, your payment, your salary, your payday, your compensation, it is guaranteed. God is mindful of his word. God watches over his word to fulfill it. Then he says, for yet a little while, he shall come. That shall come and he shall not tarry. In a little while, your reward is coming. Payday is coming. Hold on just a little bit. I know when you, when you run out of money on the 15th, the 25th seems like it's far away. But hold on. Payday is coming. Chapter 11, verse 24 to 28. By faith, Moses, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the Mr. Podosia, recompense of reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he be destroyed with the first, and he be destroyed, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Again, very loaded, and we're going to build on this. What is he saying? He's saying he, re, he, he saw the Mr. Podosia, the reward, the recompense of reward, that which was promised. And he said to himself, that is better than this. Many people use the scripture to say, so you see, you must run away from the riches of Egypt and possess the riches of Christ. As if the riches of Christ means to be poor. That's not what he was saying. Because when they did that, the Bible says, God took the wealth of Egypt which was their which was their reward which was their their abundance their salary for 400 years of work god says you've labored for 400 years you've worked hard for 400 years so now in one day i am paying you i am rewarding you so they chose rather to obey the word than to stay in egypt and god's great reward was activated that day and they came out the bible says with great substance a brilliant book that dr francisca has written please get it coming out with great substance your reward is great great substance is your reward now i gotta stop right in the middle of my excitement i gotta stop right here but thanks be unto god we have next sunday Next Sunday is still there. It hasn't been canceled. So if you are ready for more of this great teaching, I want to encourage you. Get ready. Next Sunday, we're going to continue with this. And we're going to help you to understand how to make the fiscal policies of heaven work for you. So God says to Abraham, as we get ready to have communion, Fear not, Abraham. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. I'm saying to you, my dear brother, my dear sister, fear not. Why? He says, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Your increase is here. This is your season for increase. Let's pray for you, then we'll receive communion. Father, in the name that is above every name, we declare and decree right now. 
for every man, woman of God watching this program, every son, every daughter, every person connected to us in covenant, we release upon them the blessing of increase, the blessing of favor, the reward system of heaven activated on their behalf in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every work of the enemy that's been attacking your increase, attacking your fruitfulness, your productivity. I declare in the name of Jesus, this is your greatest season of increase ever. This is your in season of Mr. Podosia. This is your in season of multiplication. This is your season of abounding. This is your season of fruitfulness. This is your season of exponential growth that you will receive not just 60, not 80, but a hundredfold. As God declared, the Lord make you a thousand times more as he has promised. May he multiply you. May he increase you. May he cause you to abound in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say increase. Increase, increase, increase amen. amen. Well, um, we can take communion to that. Hey, what do they know when we say cheers? We, you know, we, drink to that one. We drink to that one, exactly. You see, they say we drink to that one. So, we're gonna drink communion to that one. We're gonna partake of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ Thank towards you, Jesus. that. So, uh, if you have not done that yet, uh, quickly go ahead and do that with your family. But for those of you that are ready, Let's drink to that the blood of our Lord Jesus that was shed upon us for increase. His body was broken. It says he hung on the on the cross, uh, you know, so that you know mm. he's taken all all mm. curse, all sickness, all poverty that you mm. may have increased. It, it is on the cross Thank that he God. was made poor that we may become rich. Somebody Praise say God. rich, Amen. Rich. Mula mula, rich, rich, increase, increase. In the name of Jesus. So, thank Father, you, we Jesus. thank you, Lord, as we lift up thank this you, cup Father. of offering to you. Thank Lord, you, as we Father. partake of the body thank of the you, Lord Father. Jesus Christ. Thank Father, you. we thank you that increase is our portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, you declared when Jesus died on the thank cross you, that Jesus. it is finished. Yes. So, every, yes, yes. Uh, um, every, um, Father, lack is taken care of, Father. In the every, name of Jesus. Um, you know, setback is taken care of by the blood of Jesus. We thank you and we give you praise that none of our lives will experience setbacks, but it's increase upon increase upon increase. Thank in you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you share with somebody that they get blessed with this word. Meditate on the word. Declare that this week is your week of increase. And we declare that this week is our week of, of increase. increase. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you.